throughout the holidays and all year long. Of course, the most important beneficiary of this store is our customer. It's the customer who lives in that neighborhood. I was actually selling cars for about six months, but, but prior to that I actually had my own business. I was doing uh, wood refinishing on boats, and I actually did quite well at that. So I thought getting a little too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if I was going to go through all that I went through, I want something to come out of it. You know, something good. There was a truck to one side that had a camp shell, and there was a van to one side. I thought, you know, I've always said, you know, you don't want to be in a spot where nobody can see you. But I thought, four car spaces from the do front door, and I thought they had security outside. I thought, okay, well, I should be fine. And uh, when I got out, two, there was two of them. Unfortunately, he caught me. I got outside, but he caught me, and that's when I realized he had a gun, because he had a gun in the arm that was holding me. And that's when they told me, get back in the car, I'm gonna blow your head off. The year before, when I worked at the phone company, we had a safety meeting, and it was around Christmas time, and it was, they had the sheriff's department out there, and they were talking about, if you're ever in a parking lot, and this happens, what to do, don't go with them. If you go with them, you're likely not gonna live, because I guess it's statistically that's what happens. They'll kill you. That's what first went to my mind, is that I'm, yeah, I'm not going to survive this. Um, sorry. Um, so that's why, you know, the decision to jump out, because I thought, you know, I want to either chance or I want to choose, you know. And I didn't, because I thought they were going to rape me too, when he said he didn't want the car. I thought they were going to rape me. Um, so when they find, they got me back in the car after looking at the gun, I just kind of resigned to, you know, it, like I couldn't, there was nothing I could do. And I just kind of went, you go kind of cold inside. This is the parking lot where Laura Tanaka faced her attackers. Inside the store, Walmart had more than 200 security cameras and four security guards on patrol. Outside, there was nothing. The police did recommend on-site security and that there was none. That he, they had assured the people in the neighborhood that they would provide um, security and make sure it was safe for the neighborhood, and that wasn't done. It was evident that Walmart knew they had substantial problems in their parking lots. Walmart was aware that the majority of the crime throughout the states occurred in their parking lots. Despite the fact that 80% of the crime occurred in their parking lots, they had done almost nothing to protect the customers in the lots. Rape, murder, kidnapping, all of these shocking allegations, and they come from Walmart shoppers. Report of a Walmart parking lot attack. Tonight, North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be kidnapper. A violent attack in the parking lot of an Orange County Walmart. At least one man tried to carjack, rob, and shoot a woman. Who shot and killed 33-year-old Mark Karenik in the store's parking lot. A bold and deadly shooting. It happened this morning at the Walmart. Taylor's woman is recovering tonight after fighting a thief in a Walmart parking lot. A man is arrested after a tire iron attack. It happened in a parking lot of this Walmart. The two teenage workers shot while gathering carts in the parking lot yesterday at this Glendale Walmart. It happened at 1.48 this morning in the Walmart parking lot in Riverdale. She turned to run from the subject and was shot in the back. Walmart has conducted research on crime in its parking lots, and critics accuse the company of a nationwide pattern of covering up that research, of failing to turn it over in lawsuits. Here's what Walmart did not want to show. As early as 1994, as you can see in this internal document, a Walmart study showed that 80% of crime at Walmart locations occurred in the parking lot. And when the company added roving patrols at several sites, the crime rate dropped to as low as zero. A district judge in Beaumont tonight is fining Walmart stores $18 million. Judge James Mahaffey is sanctioning Walmart for what the court believes was a pattern of deception. 
It involves the case of a Southeast Texas woman who was sexually assaulted and raped in the parking lot of Walmart. The court found that Walmart did not disclose that it had conducted a safety study. A study that found if Walmart would put employees in golf carts patrolling its parking lots, crime there would drop to zero. Judge Sherilyn Wood heard a case against Walmart in Houston, Texas in 1999 involving an assault in a Walmart parking lot. She says that in 17 years on the bench and over 25,000 cases, she's rarely seen such flagrant abuse of the system. It was very disturbing to see such uh, an, an intentional course of conduct. It was corrupt. She's charging Walmart with cheating in court, and she's not the only one. This is one judge. Is there something in the drinking water in Arkansas that says perjury is all right? Another judge. Rarely has this court seen such a pattern of deliberate obfuscation, delay, misrepresentation, and downright lying. True. Unfortunately for the customer, they really don't care what goes on after you spend your money in there and come out into the parking lot to go home. Police found Holden shot to death along the side of a road in Stanton, Texas, 400 miles from where she was abducted. Megan was uh, very special. We grew up together. We lived together. She's really, really going to be missed a whole lot because she has a lot of people that love her. She was just a very sweet person. And she wanted a whole lot out of life, but she just wanted to live and, you know, be happy. That's all she wanted. Just recently, before she died, she, um, we were in her room listening to a CD, and uh, we were singing together, and we could just be open with each other. We didn't care. Police say Megan Holden was chosen at random on the way to her pickup truck in the Walmart parking lot just before midnight. After that crime was caught on surveillance video, police say Williams, a Marine veteran with a history of drug offenses, sped off in Holden's truck heading west where he apparently murdered the 19-year-old junior college student and dumped her body near some railroad tracks in the West Texas town of Stanton. I just think that there's a lot of things Walmart could have done. There should be somebody watching the cameras. Somebody should have been watching the cameras. Walmart has those cameras out there in their parking lot, and I thought that they were watching. A security camera without someone watching it is of no use at all. The abduction and murder that happened in Texas happened at a store where the loss prevention team was sent in to set up a security system outside that would track the union activity in that store. And the only reasons that they had the pictures that they did was because they had the union package on the outside of the store. Walmart focuses on protecting their property and not their patrons. When a multi-million dollar company, can you pay somebody $12 an hour to watch a camera? If people are putting profits before safety, they're putting profits before uh, human life, I don't think there's anything you can say to them. A man is suing the Walmart in Newcastle saying his mother died after a botched robbery attempt in a store's parking lot. The random Dale shooting Bertrand happened says, here, that three people are dead and three others injured. The shooting happened right in the middle of a busy shopping day. At least one man tried to carjack, rob, and shoot a woman. In the Walmart Report of a Walmart Joseph parking lot attack. Tonight, North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be hey, kidnapper. Right. A bold and deadly shooting. The shooting happened in Brown 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 this random Brown shooting. Bold and deadly shooting. Shooting happened. North Texas police are on the hunt for a would-be kidnapper. Bold and deadly shooting. Shooting happened. 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 Shooting happened
on the corner of Queen Creek and Alma School, which is just a very short distance from my house. And this particular location was within our planned community, and it was within walking distance of an elementary school and a junior high school. And I felt that it was an inappropriate location for something of that magnitude. So I decided to form a, a campaign and say no Walmart in our neighborhood. Living as Christ has taught us, we begin to transform the world. This transformation is visible in the reading that we have from Acts. We're really trying to show why the work that we're doing is the work of the gospel. The lesson we learned in Inglewood is that we have the ability through our democracy to take power and take control and actually hold big companies accountable. As a nation in this world, the most powerful, the most affluent, we have the power to make sure that all have what they need. That this is not some pie-in-the-sky vision, but instead that this is our call as Christians to make this happen. One of my neighbors and I went and handmade some little posters and we decided that we were going to have a meeting in the local park, which was about a block from here. We had no idea how many people would show up. We were absolutely amazed, and all of them wanted to do something. In the beginning, it was only a few of us. Not a lot of people came to the meetings, only some supermarket workers and a couple of churches, remember? And then little by little, more people, until they started feeling the pressure. They wanted to build the Walmart on this whole parcel. It was going to be 215,000 square feet, and there was going to be Walmart was going to take this whole space, it's like 17 football fields big. And they were going to build one big box that was Walmart, and then little stores in between, and then another big box that was Sam's Club. People volunteered to do the various chores that we had. And then we solicited what I call a core committee, and that was a group of people who would be responsible for the strategy, the press releases, everything that needed to be done to organize our campaign. So then the coalition started getting bigger and bigger, and before you knew it, everybody felt like if they were a part of a coalition for a better Inglewood, they weren't standing up to defend the community. And I think the other lesson learned in Inglewood is that there's no kind of magic potion to suddenly click this, you put this together, and suddenly you're going to win. It's a hard process. There are a lot of things that you have to put in place, um, but when you put those things in place, you can win. It includes the ability to organize regular people, small business owners, workers. We got our message focused. We hammered away on the phones, hammered away on doors. People saw us coming and going when they went to church. Every time they went to a store in Inglewood, there was a, a flyer about our, our effort. We held rallies. It includes a legal strategy, enough resources to have the research, to be able to make your case, to be able to have the materials. It includes the ability to get at your message through the press, um, to do media events. It grew to 187 volunteers, and we had block captains, and we had area chairmen. We proceeded to gather signatures on our petitions. And we started out with 1,500 signatures, and by the time we got through, we had 4,000 signatures. And they were all from people within our, what I call our area code, our zip code. Zip code. Inglewood is the first test for Walmart's ambitious plans in California, and activists say the stakes here are huge. This is like Godzilla eats Tokyo. This is much bigger than David and Goliath. All of the information that was coming from Walmart kept saying it's a done deal, there's nothing you can do about it, we have our zoning, um, don't waste your time, but <laughs> we knew better. Then we had numerous public meetings to let the public know what was happening, what the status was. It is not like they came into the small towns in the south or towns that have no business and they brought in business. No, 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 this is something completely different. They represent from Bentonville, Arkansas, 
Plantation capitalism. The future of this community depends on our ability to stop the monster in its tracks. Walmart sponsored the ballot initiative after Inglewood City Council opposed building a Walmart supercenter on the site. Today, Walmart opponents charge the initiative, Measure 4A, hijacks the city's planning process.